In today's video, we're going to look at the graphs of logarithmic functions, and we're going to use our old friend, the trusty Desmos, whoops, the Desmos calculator, uh, to help us do that. And keep in mind that these are the inverses of exponential graphs. Uh, the exponential function graphs veer out of control into infinity very quickly, so we should expect that the logarithmic functions are also going to do something somewhat similar, because uh, they're the inverse. So we have three problems to look at, and you'll be able to do one as a practice as well. Uh, and these should not take that long. So here's our first one. We have f of x equals log base 2 of x. And just like before, we're going to pick some x's and y's, uh, but I'm, I'm going to pick some x's strategically. Keep in mind that I really want my inputs right here, uh, to, ideally to be powers of 2, because if they're powers of 2, then I can figure out what the output is. So for example, if I plug in a 2 for x, log base 2 of 2, well, that's 1. And it's going to start to plot the points here for me. And what if I put in a 2? Well, log base 2 of 4, that's 2. Uh, what if I put in 8? Log base 2 of 8 is 3, and you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. You could also put in 16, and that would give us 4, uh, but you see that goes off the screen. Well, let's look at some other values as well. How about if I get a 1? Log base 2 of 1, well, we know if we have log base anything of 1, that comes out as 0. So we have 1, 0. How about something like 1 half? 1 half is log base 2 of 1 half, that means negative 1. It was the negative first power. And you get an idea of what's going on here. This thing is going to curve here, come, and now it's going to veer out of control in this direction. And we can see the graph to verify what that's going to look like. Notice that this graph will never go beyond the y-axis. There's no way for us to get a negative as an answer here. Um, so this has a domain that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. No, actually just greater than 0. can't be equal to 0. There's no way for it right here for me to put a negative number in for x. Okay. So that's how these guys are going to graph. So let's take a look at a couple more here. Let's get rid of all these guys. And now let's look at our second problem. Second problem, f of x equals log base 1 half of x. Again, I want to put in things that are um, powers of 1 half. So what if I put in 1 half itself? That would mean 1. That plot is pointed here. That point is plotted here. What if I put in 1 fourth? That would give me 2 as an output. I can see that that one is right here. What if I have 1 eighth? 3 would be my output. Starting to get an idea of what's going on here. Oh, I have email. How oh, nice. Um, starting to get an idea of what's going on here. What if I put in 1? Again, that's a point you always want to have here because log base uh, anything of 1 is going to give us 0. We have that point here, so we get an idea of what's happening. How about 2? Log base 1 half of 2. So 1 half... So 1 half to some power equals 2. Well, that's just a reciprocal, so that's a negative first power. How about 4? 1 half to the fourth, um, we understand what that is, that's going to give us a negative 2. And we get an idea of what's happening here. Um, and we can see that the graph here now dips down like this. And again, it will not cross the y-axis. Okay? Here's the last one for today. I'll turn these guys off, get rid of this. And feel free to play with the Desmos calculator here with this. It's kind of a nice tool to use for this. Here's the last one. We want to graph 2 at the same time. We're going to, uh, we're going to graph log base 3 of x and 3 to the x power. We're going to do both of these at the same time, f of x and g of x. So let's do f of x first. So again, it's log base 3, so I'm going to do powers of 3. If I know I put a 3 in, that's going to be a 1 as an output. If I put a 9, that'll be 2 as an output. 27 I won't do, uh, but 1 gives me a 0. How about a 1 third? That would give me a negative 1. So we're a little bit more proficient now with plotting the points. I can cheat a little bit here, and I can see that the graph looks like this for log base 3 of x. How about our other friend here? g of x equals 3 to the x power. Keep in mind that f of x and g of x are inverse functions. So we should see some symmetry here. So let me make another table here. Let's make another table down here. This time for 3 to the x power. So 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. It's going to veer out of control very quickly. Uh, 3 to 0 power is 1. 3 to the negative first power is 1 third. So I start to plot these points. And now I can get an idea of what it looks like by actually graphing it, making a nice smooth curve. Let's see what I got here. Let's actually hide this so you can see what's going on here. I have two graphs, and can you see the symmetry? The idea is that these guys are symmetric about the line y equals x, which I will also graph so you can kind of see what's going on, y equals x. And you can see the symmetry. You can see that this point here, come on, this point here, and it's mirror. 1, 3, 3, 1. I can also see it here with 9, 2, and... I hope that's 2, 9, and it is, sure enough. So that's about it. At this point, you should be proficient with graphing both the exponential function here and the logarithmic function here. 
you have another example on your uh, sheet there that you can try to do, and feel free to use the Desmos calculator to verify um, your work.